Carlos Ramirez, owner of NVS Audio in Roselle, New Jersey. Uh, a lot of you have been asking me about wireless CarPlay. So the GTS radio supports CarPlay if you flash the radio or if you have a wind module. Um, if you have the wind module, it's only going to support CarPlay when your wireless headset is hooked up. If you activate through software, like if you send us the radio to activate CarPlay, as soon as you plug in your phone, CarPlay is going to have to going to come up. You won't need the wind module, so it's nice and easy. But people have been asking about wireless CarPlay. So there is a solution. It's a solution we've been using for years on cars. And the phone doesn't know if it's hooked up to a motorcycle or a car. It just knows that it's CarPlay enabled. So this device allows you to have wireless CarPlay. So before I proceed, just let you know, I actually don't recommend doing this. Uh, the problem with all these, and it's not just this company, any company that makes a wireless CarPlay unit, the CarPlay goes in and out and it's a little bit of a pain in the ass. Even when it works 100%, my issue with it is since you're using the Wi-Fi, the phone eats up the battery way faster than it normally would. So when you're using CarPlay plugged in through the USB, it's charging the phone at the same time. We're using wireless CarPlay, so you don't have to have the phone plugged in for CarPlay, but now it's eating up your battery at three times the normal rate. So wireless CarPlay, even in a car, my Toyota has wireless CarPlay. I don't use it because it eats up the battery faster than my wireless charger can charge my phone. And then if I use my 3 amp charger, then it can keep up. But then if I have to plug it in, why wouldn't I just plug it in and have hardwired CarPlay if it's going to charge anyway? So it might make sense for you guys. It doesn't make sense for me. I'm not a big fan of wireless CarPlay only because it kills the battery really fast on the phone. But um, I'm going to show it to you guys anyway for the ones that are interested. The name of the company that we use is C Play. The number two air. So there's a bunch of companies on the market. This just happens to be the one that we use. All the adapters look the same. So USB with a USB connector on the end. You plug it in. You search for the unit over Wi-Fi, not Bluetooth, Wi-Fi. Then once it connects to the unit, CarPlay comes up on the screen of the radio. And it's using Wi-Fi from your phone to display CarPlay on the radio. This not only works on your Harley, if your car has CarPlay through the USB, this will convert it to wireless CarPlay. Check it out. This is the way it works. So that's the unit. Cplay2air.com is where to buy it. It's $120. Simple instructions. There's our GTS radio. It's been flashed and CarPlay has been enabled. I'm gonna plug this into the USB. There it is plugged in. Give it a few seconds and the factory radio screen is gonna change. So let's connect from my phone. There it is. According to the instructions, it was supposed to say C play, but it doesn't. It says HD 4741. There it is. No wires connected, wireless CarPlay. I'm gonna leave my phone up there.
simple, easy. All right, so like I said at the beginning, um, I'm not a big fan of wireless CarPlay, whether it's in a car or a bike. It's just, um, it kills the battery on the phone too quickly. So it's not worth it for me, in my opinion, but for others might be worth it. Plus anything we've ever used with wireless CarPlay has connection issues where sometimes it'll just drop out and you have to unplug it, plug it back in, and then wait for it to sync back up with your phone. It uh, does use your Wi-Fi connection. Um, it is convenient in the fact that you can keep your phone in your jacket or your vest and don't have to worry about flying away off a mount. You can keep it in the locked away and then do your navigation. But I also find it convenient to keep my phone in the cubby hole plugged in with wired CarPlay. So I don't know, it's, for me, it's, it's whatever. Uh, for others, it might be a huge deal to not have to plug their phone in. Um, I like having my phone battery fully charged at all times. So uh, unit works good. The glitches that the unit has are not necessarily hardware glitches. The, you have to use certified Apple cables. If at any time Apple feels that the connection is not done through a certified cable or a device that's certified to Apple, it resets the connection. So if you're having CarPlay issues on your car or your motorcycle with the phone plugged in, it's always the cable. If CarPlay just works, um, if you're having CarPlay problems or Android Auto problems, it's usually the cable. If you notice in the video, I was using the white cable that came with the iPhone. So that's what I have plugged into my bike at all times because you have very little connection issues if you use the Apple certified cable. Um, if you notice when the unit connected, the name on that's supposed to come up for the unit is supposed to be C-Play 2 Air or Auto Kit. That was not the name that came up. For some reason, it was HD something or other. But um, when you have it and you're trying to pair your Bluetooth, it's obviously a new connection. So there was nothing else in the area. It's the only thing that came up. So I clicked on it and that was it. You saw it in the video. But um, car seat play to air, uh, solid unit. Um, it's 120 bucks if you want to take the risk on the investment. It works really good. The interface is really good. You saw I just plugged it into the bike, came up on the screen. Um, it wouldn't let me connect from the touchscreen. So you're supposed to give the option to connect from the touchscreen or the phone. Didn't work from the touchscreen. I just clicked on the Bluetooth list on my phone. It did everything else by itself. No answering passwords or passcodes or um, password for the Wi-Fi. It just connects. So um, for 120 bucks, might be worth for you to try.